Yo, what's good, y'all? Hope you guys have been safe out there in this pandemic riddle world. Hope you guys are enjoying the games you've neglected in your backlogs or enjoying newly released games that have just come out. And if you aren't doing either of those things, well, let me introduce you to a first person shooter that is a bit different than those in that genre. So first off, let me shout out to Victor Allestein who put this on my radar. And if you know of any other games that I haven't featured yet that you think are promising games that we should all look out for in the future, don't hesitate to say something in the comment section. Don't hesitate to hit me up on Twitter, send me a DM, tag me, whatever. I'm definitely always looking out for these kind of games, games that are smaller from smaller developers that are just trying to get started and have a great, interesting, or unique idea for a game and just need a little bit of exposure. So please just hit me up and I will definitely take a look at it. And without further ado, let's get to this one. So this one is called Bright Memory. It's made through the Unreal Engine and it is a single player first person shooter with Dark Souls and Devil May Cry elements. It's extremely fast paced. A bright memory is being developed and published by FYQD Studio. Now don't feel bad if you haven't heard of FYQD Studio before because frankly I haven't either. This is their first game and the studio was actually started and developed by just one developer. So much like how Lawso Aside began, this game began with one developer who started the studio off of it and since then has grown into a full team of developers working on this game which has in turn allowed them to rework some things, allowed them to add more features to the game that was originally seen to have in its scope. What makes Bright Memory fun is that it has some really tight shooting elements here that you can combine with unique melee skills. Now, you won't really understand what I mean by that until you actually execute an EMP melee blast and then follow that up with these energy sword strikes that remind me of Strider from back in the day. You know what I'm talking about. And then have enemies just air juggling in the air. Like, you won't really know what that's like until you actually try it out. It's pretty fun. The more successful you are in combat, the more experience you get. And then that experience you could then transfer into new abilities, some active, some passive, to make you a more efficient killer. You may be wondering why well, I haven't mentioned the story yet. And it's because there isn't really much of one here. What you have for a story is pretty nonsensical. You'll start out in a futuristic looking building doing some spy stuff and then the next moment you're fighting medieval looking monsters skeletons and werewolves it's just like it's out there man like somebody got high and thought it would be really cool to throw the most random video game settings and elements all into one game and then try to find a way to make it all correlate with one another it really doesn't but i appreciate them trying your main protagonist here is her name is sheila shayla i'm gonna go with sheila and the story like I said, man, it don't make much sense, but it appears she's trying to infiltrate a facility to stop a machine from destroying the world, but instead her and everyone she was fighting were sucked into a portal that took them through time or to another part of the world, whatever. I don't know where they're at, but it's pretty hard to follow, but look, it's kind of got that cheesy B-movie dialogue and unconvincing voice acting, and it's not really the focus of the game. The game, the focus of this game core of this game is the gameplay and the gameplay is pretty fun i know i kind of got into the story a little bit but let's discuss some of the other negatives with it as with any any game with limited resources there are downsides that you'll have to expect from these kind of games usually an indie or double a game will have these issues dismissed because you kind of expect that with a smaller team smaller studio smaller money and resources to work with but i think that this the visual fidelity of this game is very surprising it looks good it has ray tracing on pc and that may put some gamers off and have them expecting AAA animation to match the near AAA visuals and that's just not going to happen the animations in this game are not great they aren't terrible either but they are not on the level of what you expect from this kind of visual game uh, the aim and shoot gunplay uh, mechanics are pretty solid, but sometimes they can be inconsistent. I played it with a 360 controller, and I can tell this game was initially developed with mouse and keyboard in mind. Sometimes when I press the left trigger to aim, it doesn't do it. 
One time in particular, I almost died because I was pressing right trigger to shoot and nothing was happening. Also, when you're in menus, it's not designed to take into account your user controller, so it still has a mouse icon on screen. The movement of that mouse is really, really slow, so it's best to just play this game with mouse and keyboard, and if you're not comfortable with mouse and keyboard, use the controller for actually playing the game, but didn't use a mouse and keyboard while you're in the menus. There was another issue I also had where it just seems like sometimes I'm sinking into the floor. Like I'm fighting and I'm moving and it just feels like I'm sinking down into the floor. I don't know if that's just me or maybe there was a bug going there. But again, this game is in early access. So hopefully developers will have these issues ironed out by the time it hits full release. It's also extremely short. You could probably complete this from beginning to end in 30 to 45 minutes. Now hold on a moment, I know some of you are wondering why I didn't mention this earlier, so I guess the game is very, very short, it's in early access, and it's only on PC at the moment with plans to bring it to consoles later on. The part of the game that is available right now is called Bright Memory Episode 1. The full game release title is called Bright Memory Infinite. And if you buy the early access version off Steam, you will be able to get the full version of the game for no additional cost. So essentially you're putting down $10 to play a pretty fun game for 30, 45 minutes with the expectation that later on when the full game comes out, you will get that game for no additional cost. Now I'm not expecting that game to be 10 hours long or anything like that, but for 10 bucks, I think that's a pretty good deal. The developers also said they plan on releasing regular experimental editions of new features for players to try out in between now and the release of Bright Memory Infinite. So there's more to see here. There's more that you'll be able to get for just that $10. So what do you guys think of Bright Memory? Are you gonna check it out on Steam right now or wait until full release? Are you gonna wait until the game releases on consoles? Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. It's all good. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content on Bright Memory in the future. Peace.